everybody, it's Katie and welcome to another edition of The Everyday. If you are just watching this series for the first time, I've been sharing over the last few months different things that I use every single day or things that make my everyday just a little bit more special. And today, tea in hand seemed like the perfect day to talk about taking time for you. Um, I try to do this every single day, taking time for me. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom and finding time just for me is kind of tricky, <laughs> but this is also something I tried to do when I was working outside of the home full-time and not a mom. So these different things could apply to you no matter what season of life that you're in. And I've got to say, taking the time for you and doing things that you love is so important for just our own mental health and stability. I mean, I'm just, I feel like a refreshed and more energized person when I take even just 10 minutes to myself. So I wanted to talk about that today and share the different things that I do every day that just make that every day a little more tolerable. So before we get started, can I just say one thing? And this is something I've actually struggled with probably for the last six months. And if you've been reading the blog, you've probably seen this kind of ebb and flow <laughs> for a while. And that is being okay with giving yourself some time just to yourself just to relax and not be like hyper productive or feel like you're wasting time. Lose the guilt of taking those minutes, whether they're 10 minutes, whether they're an hour, lose the guilt of, of taking the time for yourself. Because honestly, when you are feeling like you need to take time, that is probably your body's way of telling you, you need to take a break. And so listen to yourself and don't feel guilty if you, need to take that time and you shoot and you build it in every single day. Good for you. But I'm speaking to the choir here. This is something that I have been struggling with, as I said, for probably maybe the last six months um, in particular is what's sticking out in my brain and um, feeling guilty that there are some days where the nap time where my daughter's taking a nap, I just want to sit on the sofa and veg and not do a thing. And I've been feeling really guilty about that because my, my internal nature is to be a very productive, hardworking, don't slack kind of girl. And I've always been that way. And recently I've been f fighting <laughs> my body telling me that I need to relax. Yes, I am pregnant and I realize that's probably playing into it too, my need to relax, but <laughs> it feels like it's more than that. So I've been fighting that, that guilt for the last six months and I'm only just recently telling myself, it's okay. And I've actually found that when I take the time, even if it's just five or 10 minutes, if I take the time to relax or do something just for myself, something special, something out of just tackling to do's that I actually bounce back to my to do list and become even more productive after. So if nothing else, taking a break, taking a chance for you just to relax and wind down a little bit, is a chance to bounce back and be in some ways even more productive for the rest of your day. So if nothing else, tell yourself that, but let go of the guilt. The second thing I wanna say before I launch into my, my personal things that I do is know what you need and what your body, your brain needs to wind down and relax. We are all wired differently. We all need different things when it comes to relaxation and time for just you. So if you are reading the million blog posts out there that are telling you that you need to have an amazing morning routine, but you are not a morning person, don't beat yourself up about it. Do some nighttime stuff. You know, don't, don't, if you're just not naturally wired a certain way, then don't force yourself to do things that way. Find what works for you. Find what works for you to relax and find what works for you to relax and then get back into your productivity mode. And that has also taken me some time to figure out too. And I'll share a few of my tips of what I found works for me, at least right now. <laughs> so with all that being said, let me talk about the things that I do personally to find those quiet moments just for myself throughout the day. The first thing I do is I get up early. I am a morning person and I am an early riser. However, <laughs> I have learned probably in the last year that I am not a productive morning person and you might be the same way. I um, love getting up early before the rest of my family and we're talking like at least we're talking two hours before my family. My family stirs around seven and I get up at five. That seems ridiculously early and it, and it kind of is, but 
I find that that really works best for me. I've tried adjusting that wake up time a little bit later and a little bit earlier. Five is sort of my sweet spot. And at first I used to tell myself, I'm getting up at five and I'm gonna be super productive and I'm gonna get in my computer and do 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 do. No, I found myself being so upset <laughs> that I wasn't, like it would be seven o'clock and I'm like, why am I crabby? Why am I upset that my family is waking up? And it's because I would get up and force myself into this productivity mode first thing in the morning when I am actually not a productive person first thing in the morning. So what I've been doing recently is allowing myself an hour from five to six to get up, have my hot drink and watch something. It might be YouTube videos, it might be a TV series on Netflix, whatever it is, but allow myself an hour to not only just kind of wake up, but allow myself to be enjoying something that I like and I won't have a chance to really do again throughout the day. So I give myself that hour and then at six, that's when I start doing productive stuff. It may still be watching YouTube videos while answering blog comments on my computer. I may be multitasking, but it's at least when I start and tell myself six o'clock, I have to start doing something. But I give myself that hour to just enjoy the peace and quiet. And I find that I'm a lot happier come seven o'clock when my family is up and I need to go upstairs, start getting ready, start getting everyone breakfast, da, 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 da. So I've given myself that quiet time that I need desperately. And I've figured out I am not a productive morning person and that's okay. I always thought I was, but I figured out I'm not. And I'm okay with that. Now, one way I like to force myself to have even just 10 minutes of quiet time throughout the day is with this. It's tea. I obviously love tea. My blog is called Cup of Tea for a variety of reasons, and mainly it's because I love tea. <laughs> so, and there's a reason why tea kind of forces me to slow down a little bit, um, and it's because it's hot. I drink hot tea, and you cannot start chugging tea right away. A glass of water, you can chug. It's done in 30 seconds. Tea takes you probably longer than 30 seconds to drink. And you sit and you have to savor. You can't move, you can't walk around with it very easily. Even talking with it is kind of challenging sometimes. So you kind of are forced to sit still and sip it and take your time with it. And that's why I love tea. Um, and if I'm craving just a few minutes of just quiet, even if my family is all here and Elizabeth's, you know, demanding my attention and that kind of thing, even if I just make myself a cup of tea and I sit in her playroom and encourage her to play while I'm watching, I can at least sit there and just, ah, tea. And just holding it makes me happy. Um, and this is just a simple thing that I've incorporated daily just to give me a chance to sit and relax. And a, particularly in the afternoons when I'm feeling a little run down, a little tired, just kind of wanting the day to be over. It's like, I just want to go to bed. This is when tea is particularly nice. It can be any tea. I'm, I am not that picky, <laughs> but and just finding that time to just kind of sit and savor a little bit and let the time kind of creep by a little bit is helpful with a cup of tea. Speaking of tea, one thing I've recently incorporated into my quiet moments throughout the day is switching up how productive I am during nap time. And this probably is as a result of being pregnant, but I mentioned very, in the very beginning of this video that I have been having a hard time getting productive during nap time. And yes, it is probably because I am pregnant, my body is telling me you need to rest and you need to sit down, but it goes against my very nature. So um, I've been trying to give myself a little bit of grace um, during nap time, but also making sure that this precious, you know, few hours of uninterrupted time is put to good use. So what I've been doing recently is something that I've actually, I'm like, why have I never done this before? I've, during nap time, I would find myself sitting and turning, like, I'm gonna, just going to watch one show, or I'm going to watch just a few YouTube videos, and a few turns into like three hours worth. Total waste of time. Yes, I love TV, and I'm a TV junkie, and I can... TV is how I relax, and I'm okay with that, but it's not the best use of my time. So what I've been doing is allowing myself for the first 30 minutes of nap time, make myself a cup of tea or lunch, if I haven't had lunch yet, sit down and I read. It could be a book that I'm reading for fun. Imagine reading a novel for fun. Isn't that amazing? So it could either be reading a book for fun, maybe it's a magazine, 
um, but I've also been trying to use that time for my quiet time for Bible study. I, you know, I'm not a morning productive morning person, and a lot of people do their Bible reading first thing in the morning. I find that is not the time for God and I to connect. I I like a little bit of a boost and encouragement midday because that's kind of when I start hitting my slump. And so, um, having that quiet time with my Bible, um, maybe catching up on a Bible study that um, I'm following or in a group that I'm a part of, catching up on that kind of reading, it's just a great chance to kind of settle down, calm down a bit, and give myself some relaxation time. And so then, at the end of those 30 minutes, I'm feeling really refreshed and not, you know, stuck in, in front of a TV. I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to tackle something on the to-do list. And then giving myself at the end, towards the end of nap time, another 30 minutes to kind of ease back in <laughs> to mommy mode. Um, and this is something that I did actually when I was working, um, when I was working full time in an office, is I actually set my Thursdays, I blocked off an hour in my calendar, Thursday afternoons, like around two-ish, and I would block off the hour and I would take myself down to the local coffee shop down the road, get myself a cup of coffee and bring a book. And I would sit in the coffee shop and read a book. And um, I may be there for 30 minutes, I may be there for the full hour, but it was something that I looked forward to every single Thursday. And I found myself more productive on, I called it my coffee shop Thursdays, um, and found myself more productive on Thursdays because I knew I had that break to look forward to. Um, and it was just once a week, you know, easy to plan around, but always blocked it off of my calendar so no one would schedule an appointment or a meeting right in that time. But that I tried to do that when I was working, and it occurred to me recently, I was like, why am I not doing that now? I so enjoyed it. I read a lot of books. It was really nice. Um, but why am I not doing that now? So having that kind of quiet reading time, it's still time for myself, but it's not defaulting to just watching something on TV. And it's been a game changer. I love it. Finally, I think probably every, anybody can relate to this little tidbit, but I can find a peace and quiet and joy cruising one of my favorite stores. Even if Elizabeth is with me, she is my little buddy when it comes to shopping and she loves to shop with me. So we will go and kind of cruise around. Um, it could be any store, but um, Target, you know, is a favorite. You can get into big trouble at Target, so I try not to do this too often. But um, even if it's by myself or with Elizabeth, just it's just fun to kind of mindlessly cruise aisles without a real agenda, without a hurry, 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 we've got to do this, and I've got to go here, and then go here, go here. And it's just fun to pop in somewhere and just cruise. And I don't know, I just I find that to be very relaxing. And again, it just depends on what store you go to because Target can be dangerous. Um, I have a home store that I love to cruise through too, and that's a great place. Elizabeth, it's usually quiet. And I put, don't put Elizabeth in a shopping cart. She just runs aisle to aisle, and we find tons, tons of treasures, and it's lots of fun. So those are the kinds of things that I, I like try to sneak in at least once a week just to like pick a store and just kind of mindlessly wander without a real agenda. And that's, I don't know, that's also really relaxing for me. So I hope, I hope this video wasn't too boring <laughs> and that you found some interesting tidbits that you can maybe try to incorporate into your day. Again, finding time just for yourself when it's quiet and you can kind of reboot your brain um, from the obligations that you're maybe stressing over and just take a chance to relax a little bit. Again, maybe 10 minutes, maybe an hour. But just finding those moments throughout the day make every day so much more tolerable and I think more productive if you can either count on a routine that you will always get a dedicated time to relax or just kind of finding those surprise little moments to sneak in some time, even if it's just with a cup of tea and a magazine that you can quickly flip through. I mean, just finding those little moments is so precious and I think so important for us as a chance to reboot. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom and you've got kids crawling all over you and demanding your attention, or you're working full-time in an office and you feel like your telephone is constantly ringing and your emails just won't stop. I've been in both places and no matter what, finding moments to yourself, no matter what your situation is so, so important. I would love to hear what some of your favorite ways to kind of wind down and relax and take a moment to breathe. I would love to hear some of your ideas because I'm always looking for new ways to spice up my everyday 
okay? Relaxation time. Um, if this is your first time stopping by my YouTube channel, I would love you to subscribe. That would be really, really nice. And swing by the blog too, if you haven't checked that out before. I've got links down below for you. Have a great day, and thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.